Hey everyone and welcome to another episode. So today I am joined by Karina. Karina Rathbone Ariel is a passionate aromatherapy emotions coach, helping people feel empowered with natural solutions and to utilize essential oils for both emotional and physical well-being. Karina is a certified aromatherapist, Swedish and stone massage therapist, internationally accredited emotional aromatherapy advisor and she is just one of the most fascinating people to talk to. I discovered this when I met her in person at the baby show and we got talking and I said to Karina you have just got to come on the Sleep Nanny podcast and talk about what you do because there is so much to what she does that can help so many people. Karina welcome to the show. Thank you so much. No, I'm really excited to be here and it really is one of my passionate topics. I do love, I love sharing what these oils can do for people. It's, it's an incredible process. It really is. And, you know, quick backstory. Um, I, I was pointed in Karina's direction um, at one of the events where I was, I was speaking on stage and I'd actually suffered, we think, um, a, a nasty neurotoxic po- food poisoning um, that sent me into a spin. And after the obvious effects of food poisoning, I was still left with these horrible dizzy spells. And I actually was went really dizzy on stage. Um I had to, I, I kept going, nobody would have known, but afterwards it was, oh, I was still dizzy. And somebody said to me, you need to go and see Karina and that you'd managed to get somebody back up after they fainted just by using satin essential oils. And I went, right, I somehow need to get home and I need this dizziness to stop. And I think this lady might have the solution. So I'm going to go and have a chat with her. And that's where it all began. And she really did save me. <laughs> but these oils are powerful, aren't they, Karina? Mm-hmm. The, the sense of smell, it blows my mind. Yeah, so exactly that. With the peppermint that was recommended to you, um, one drop of peppermint yeah. is like 28 cups of peppermint tea. So that potency really works within the body chemistry. And so mm. with peppermint, like professional athletes will smell it before a race because it gives the body a natural boost it connects you with your breath it lifts you up and it really does help your blood circulate around the body so if somebody has a fainting episode we've used it as you say previously and it will literally help bring you round bring you back um and help you sort of become more alert so yeah it's it's nice that someone shared that with you and and yeah our direction i'm so glad they did and it's it's because like you say the the potency and it it gets to the brain so much faster is that that's what it is isn't it it's so when you inhale that scent it connects with the brain you smell it and it immediately affects your not only your nasal passage it also helps with your airways it helps you connect um with your breathing but if you smell it through the nose you'll feel it through the sinuses you feel Mm. it through around the back of the eyes in fact and it's it's so amazing that your nasal cavity your, your nose is right next to the central part of your brain and that is where your emotion center is so chemically speaking when you smell something it can trigger different hormones in the body so if wow. you have been feeling wobbly and you you, you smell the peppermint that literally is going to give you a boost it helps you to sort of lower your stress responses You know, if you're panicking, I I used to faint quite a lot as a child, actually. I used to have low low blood pressure. Um, And that feeling of knowing you're about to go or that sort of wooziness or spinning feeling, the peppermint helps to sort of bring you back from that. And so your stress response is you don't feel quite so panicky in your chest. And so it's amazing. It's amazing. That's just one of the ways that it can help. And that's like a remedial, like if, you, you know, you can actually feel better or fix something like that. But you mentioned there as well about the emotion center. And I'm sure lots of people can relate to the thing of like, oh, when I smell this smell, it reminds me of this or, you know, trigger feelings. And talk to us a bit about that. Like that's oh, yeah. so clever. So it's it's so beautiful. So where you grew up, the, the aromas you've smelled in your childhood yeah. Um, and all of the things that you're familiar with, your sense of smell is so intrinsically linked, completely wrapped around your memories. So somebody in England, you know, in my garden, we used to have honeysuckle growing all across the, the huge wall in the garden. 
and it was a really intoxicating summer smell. If, and if I smell honeysuckle, I'm instantly reminded of that sweetness and childhood. Mm. And it's instant and it's really powerful. Uh, and, you know, so if other people grew up in India, they might have spices that are more familiar um, through cooking. Uh, and that could be really comforting. Um, and it can go the other way as well. If you've had a bad experience, certain smells make you sort of have a trigger of, oh, I don't want that. Um, so I think it's it's so powerful. We really underestimate it. Yeah. And I think I came to oils from a medicinal perspective originally. And then I realized what the emotions were doing. And I couldn't mm-hmm. believe how it was helping me to process things and to actually give me a boost through the day. I mean, I think I had a, a perfume years ago, which was really citrusy. And I would go, oh, I'm really tired. I'll spritz it in the middle of the day for a boost. And that yeah. is aromatic dressing. That's using an essential oil to lift you up. And that is that, that citruses are really mood boosting. And mm. so I was automatically using an essential oil, but hadn't really correlated it as aromas for the mind in that sense. So you've yeah. probably got similar experiences yourself. Is there anything that you remember vividly from childhood or certain smells that take you to holidays or things like that? I don't know about smells from childhood there's nothing that kind of well no that's not true the general spring air um and I did notice this the other day we're in springtime as we're recording this and um it was there were (laughs) it's gone a bit cold now but there was a a mild spell and I I was just like oh just and and it wasn't a particular Mm. scent but it was just that sense of of spring air and that really did take me back to the comforts of childhood where probably I spent more time outside and yeah, and yeah. you know especially you know, playing in the garden and things but with holidays as well like the, the I do love the scent that comes with milder air um yeah. that and warmth. even grass freshly cut, cut grass yes a really summer that. you know school field playing field just being freshly cut that sort of smell is really evocative isn't it yeah Yeah, that I really do love the smell of freshly cut grass what why is that is that because lots of people say they like that smell yeah well well, I think in summer we have that positivity from nature anyway with more day more sunshine Mm. we I I know that seasonally you know we can be affected by the darker weather it could be a bit oppressive um and I think the so sunshine in grass. summer and mm. yeah, or even tropical fruit nice. juices, we tend to use those things more in the summer, don't we? And then you've got yeah. aromas like flowers. So springtime and you think of crocuses and blossom, cherry blossom and mm. those lovely, very subtle florals. But what you're smelling, and you say the smell of spring, is sometimes yeah. not only the moisture levels have altered, but the trees also release different things that we're not visibly conscious of. And yeah. that's really powerful and emotive as well that's part of it yeah it's true it, it, yeah I really um I think you, you you've talked to me a bit about this as well like how the sense that we're attracted to so there'll be things that I find smell beautiful that other people wouldn't like and in the same sense where we maybe choose our fragrances and you know everybody has things that they are drawn to more than others and and you showed me some really interesting things about that and how what and why we may be drawn to certain things and it can come from emotions um and that that's the world that I find really really interesting that what one person may be drawn to may be linked to something emotional rather than just oh yes I like that smell it's really interesting yeah so you've got different categories haven't you you've got sort of roots of plants that are very deep rich smoky aromas um that mm. is one of my favorites or then you have tree oils like um, frankincense or cypress or you know evergreen trees the fir trees um and they're very strengthening aromas so they're quite mm. grounding they have you know, think of a tree and it's deeply rooted and often what we see above the ground is the depth of the tree roots under the ground. So the trees are really anchored and stabilizing. Mm-hmm. So if you're feeling a little bit wobbly emotionally, the tree oils will stabilize those feelings. Um, then we mentioned florals already, but there's mints and herbs. Um, and then you've got spices. Um, and there's, yeah, it literally what people like 
fascinatingly with the emotions is usually what their body needs is balancing and it's so yeah. interesting that the chemistry of that sort of works with like a key within ourselves and when we use an oil for like one particular reason it has multiple benefits on the side of that as well but yeah so mm. often people are say, well, why do i love this so much and then you can look it up in certain books and references that you can find um like ginger is an empowering oil so it can really if you're procrastinating that ginger can lift you up and motivate you uh, or lavender can help you communicate clearer and yeah there's there's huge elements that we just don't really utilize um in one mm. life it sort of goes under the radar it's not really yeah really modern sort of science noticed yet it's ancient medicinal history really and it yeah it's it fascinating. is it's medicinal it feels well like a real memory. yeah no it feels like a really on uh, it's not untouched because like you say it goes back in, into ancient history but in the modern world it feels like a little bit of an untapped <laughs> secret superpower that we yeah. could learn so much more about and I'm thinking now you know from our listeners who we're going to have listeners who are um, maybe at the stages where it could be morning sickness and nausea through mm -hmm. to um, exhaustion with a new baby or um, emotional roller coasters of trying to parent toddlers and all kinds of things mm -hmm. that will be going on for them. Um, I know you know um, a lot about this and how you can use various oils to support all these kinds of things. I mean, what, mm -hmm. what can you share with them? Um, along those lines that can really help well, yeah well with parenting specifically i think it can be quite overwhelming you know where even through pregnancy as well we have so much advice that's sort of offloaded on people um when yeah. you mentioned you know nausea um i actually suffered terrible nausea with my first daughter um and i was i ended up losing weight through my pregnancy rather than gaining it um, I was re I felt so nauseous it was it was ridiculous but my midwife I had a lovely Chinese lady who would say to me oh you need to drink some ginger tea or you know peppermint tea peppermint and ginger were sort of recommended and of course the oils do yeah. the same thing so you can literally smell peppermint and that's going to help balance out um, the body if you're feeling really quite icky um, but then mm. basically the herbs the oils are more potent than that um and it also gives you something really natural, which you're just smelling. So you're not apply. You don't have to apply it on the body. So you can have it in a mm. diffuser, aromatically in the background, and that's really going to help the body and help that sort of settle. And also having, you know, mm. having something in your hand you can utilize, like a natural tool that, um, that's that's not going to overwhelm you with a list of massive side effects. You know, you have to be mm -hmm. careful to not take too many, you know, painkillers and things like that. Um. Yeah, but there are oils that can help you with so many steps through that um, emotionally and physically. Definitely, yeah, it's mm. it's mm. beautiful to incorporate that. Like hypnobirthing is one that I often mention as well. So quite often, yeah. hypnobirthing professionals will use the smell as an anchor. So quite often, that's mm. orange, wild orange smells quite sweet, quite inoffensive, mm. you know. Uh, and smelling that on a regular basis, what you can do is form a completely new neurological pathway in the brain. So with that habitual wow. process of smelling the oil regularly and visualizing calm, it can be yeah. a really powerful anchor into that moment for when labor actually happens as well. So or some people use lavender, some people have, use balance oil. I actually have yeah. it on my desk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. isn't that amazing? So if we've had tension in the mm. body or emotional tension, those oils are so yeah. useful. Yeah. I actually found ginger um so I didn't know about this back then but I I found ginger ale and apple juice was like my go-to drink when I was expecting my eldest my firstborn. Um and for that kind of reason, like the, the ginger just felt really settling. And I really didn't give that any thought that didn't come from any, you know, advice or anything. It just was, and I don't normally drink it. Um, I don't really drink it now, but it was just that instinctive. And so I really, I really get what you mean with that. Like we, it, our body does seem to know. And it's, that's what I guess where we get cravings in pregnancy as well, isn't it? Our body's going, hmm, 
I'm craving this. There's obviously something in it that I'm needing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Actually, when I, pregnant, I mm. think I really went off coffee. The smell of coffee smelled so bad to me, and I really do love a coffee. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have lots of yeah. it, but I do love a coffee in the morning. And to me, usually mm. that's the smell of starting my day, you know, preparing my day. But when I was pregnant, I couldn't, my body was just like, no, couldn't go near it. And even walking past Starbucks and other coffee shops in London, I was like, no, my body was saying no to this very clearly. So I like what you're mentioning there, like the intuition of your body is really amazing. You know, there's, there is definitely reasons behind it. And your body goes through so much, doesn't it, in pregnancy? And, you know, your body's Did you get your sense for... Is is coffee okay now? Like, are you okay with it now? Did that last? Yeah, it or is, with it now. Is it part? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I have one that's stuck around. I was happy. <laughs> Again, keep drinking it. <laughs> that is good. Because like, I had one that has stuck and I don't know why. And it's the smell of... So it, I put it down to fajitas. But um, I think what happened was my husband was making fajitas once and it was when I was pregnant and I think I felt a bit nauseous and I'd eaten them before. It was fine. It's not a problem. This one day I just went, oh my God, I can't, I can't bear the smell. I can't eat this. And there's nothing wrong with it. It was just me. And we are now, my eldest is 13 and a half years old. I still <laughs> dislike the smell of cooking fajitas. Mm-hmm. It's almost like that stir fry chari kind of in the pan set scent that even now, if he mm-hmm. even does a stir fry, I'm just like, oh, yeah. oh I don't painful, like that it smell. Takes you immediately back, right? The smell is like really so vivid. It takes you back to that moment where it wasn't working for you. Yeah. I where it made me feel nauseous <laughs> maybe. Yeah. But mm. that's how like powerful it is, as you say, that you just, oh, mm. no, don't. Yeah. Mm. I'd like to overcome um, that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think um, lavender oil is probably one of the most commonly used oils for soothing. It's mm. in loads of baby yeah. products, you know, um, yep. very calming to the skin. And lots of bedtime sprays have lavender in. It's in our and, spray. Um, it's in our yes, spray. Yeah, you have, I've mentioned, yeah, you have the spray, yeah. don't you? Yeah, we that's have lovely. It. Yeah. And so, yeah, that having those little routines are really fascinating as well. So you can sort of have it stack your routines yeah. to expect to calm down before bedtime, which is probably one of the very underused but really valuable ways of ho- helping your children to, to prepare for bedtime. Um, and there's particular oils yeah. that literally help lower that stress response, help balance out the cortisol levels and actually help the body just settle down right you know i think my children always revved up before bedtime and so we use a diffuser mm. and that helps to settle it and also in the yeah. bath you know bath bubbles with lovely fragrances or preferably yeah. you know very natural ones <laughs> there's lots of synthetic fragrances yeah. out there so the most natural you yeah. can go is the best um but yeah so so that's powerful. why we wanted to create our our scent it's like a hundred percent pure essential oil mm, and yeah. so we've got the candle which is great for calming for mum or for parents you know mm. to enjoy that relaxation the spray is a room spray or spritz spray it's safe to use in children's rooms or around the bath or wherever and mm. um, we call it spritz to sleep um but it it just has that enhancement and I agree with you I have obviously in creating our own I sampled so many and there are some that do re- you can really tell the syntheticness to them and they're yeah. it's not and the it's, same yeah, but when it's sadly, that pure oil it's just yeah the sadly there's so many unregulated areas of that and it is um linked with perfumery um so I, mm. I tend to try and use oils which are as, as clean as possible yeah. and, and there are so many companies yeah. out there I, I do tend to lean towards the doTERRA one because the type of yeah. lavender that they use is the most calming one as well. So there's some lavenders that can excite the body. So even in the species yeah. of lavender that's used, sometimes it can have the reverse effect. So if somebody doesn't wow. love lavender, it's interesting that you can mm. even use an alternative. Like orange for me is very, very calming. Um, so that yeah. will help me sleep better than lavender. Just little switches. Yeah. I think my daughter loves minty aromas for bedtime. 
uh, and my other yeah. daughter loves lavender. So we've got three different types. And you yeah. always assume your children are going to be exactly like you, but they're not always the same. <laughs> so again, no. it's to fix the individual, doesn't it? The sense of smell. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I imagine you could also use that then, we were just sort of saying for sleep and calming, but also if you've got a little one who is maybe, well, when in toddlerhood, meltdowns, um, you know, that sort of fractious time and things, and just like, if you've got that diffuser going and you have that scent going, whilst obviously all the other calming things you can do mm. as a parent, but that could really aid the mood would you say it can completely help absolutely and even children with special needs who have additional you know um, anxiety issues it could be really helpful mm. to have something like a room spray so that they feel in control mm. and so they can be like oh, I'm, I'm mm. feeling these emotions and rather than judging or trying to shift out of them immediately to use that aroma is really nice to just sort of accept what we're feeling so the mindfulness comes through it as yeah. well. And it's a very stabilizing practice to sort of go, oh, where am I feeling that? You know, and that's a lot of the emotions work I do is recognizing where we hold tensions. And as a massage therapist, you know, we mm. talk about the world of the world on the shoulder, the weight of the world, sorry, on your shoulders, that tension in the body, yeah. sometimes a nervous tummy, you know, if you've got new things happening or going to school. Um, the, the aromas can be really powerful to sort of stop and notice it and then sort of mm. where is it in my body and should I just sit with that and breathe and again anchoring into the breath is just so useful to help bring down that stress yeah. response so yeah absolutely yeah. even room spray if the kids are arguing you know you could even use your sleep spray <laughs> just and you don't yeah. have anything or have a diffuser on in the background and you don't have to di directly say to them, I'm putting this on so it calms you down. You just do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's really simple. Yeah. Or if there's a particularly anxious husband who's come home from work in a bad mood or, you know, that just happens. Just spray like, him. <laughs> don't say anything. Yeah, spritz. <laughs> so, yeah. It really it's useful. your secret weapon, ladies. <laughs> yeah. It is. You can sleep spray for more things. <laughs> Yeah. yeah well that's it's it valuable. that's it isn't it yeah it's really valuable. Yeah. life throws at us stresses you know sometimes you're I know for me I had a natural pregnancy planned and then I ended up being induced with my first daughter and so that was a little bit yeah. of like oh gosh I planned all this lovely natural stuff and then I didn't get to use it um and I got oils mm. actually not on that pregnancy but when, with my second daughter um but so powerful so, you know, so if something does change in your in your labor plan, you can deal with it and just be like, mm. right, these are my priorities. I'm just going to take back my control. And again, that oil is yeah. just incredible for that. Just to coming back to your own energy. That's also a big yeah. part of love teaching, you know, because we can get bombarded, can't we, with other opinions and other directions of mm. what people think is best for us. Yeah, and I think we That's a really that. great yeah that's a really great point because um when we have these plans and they don't often go to perfect plan um i think with labor and birth and it can throw all kinds of twists and turns at you mm -hmm. and in a moment when you're so vulnerable and you know there's there's a lot going on and i think i mean we always talk about that and, and being being flexible like having a flexible plan and and knowing that things could change and being okay with that because if we get too hung up on things happening mm. a certain way like I had a hypnobirthing water birth planned uh, for the first one and it ended up being a four steps with emergency spinal so mm. like it's it, things don't always go to plan yeah. but I think preparing for the unknown and knowing that look if things don't go to plan um and and having those I guess anchors and tools like you say to be able to tune into you knowing that I can't control these things that are going on but I can control me and that I think is actually quite empowering mm -hmm. and if yeah. you know are there anything what what could what could do that if somebody was listening now saying yes okay what do I need to get in order to <laughs> yeah <laughs> center myself yeah. in yeah. that moment yeah. if if things do go a little off off plan mm -hmm. and I need to just 
gather myself like what mm-hmm. how, how how do we do that so i really well particularly for pre- do you mean for pregnancy and birth in specific the balance- yeah i mean in that particular yeah yes, yeah so i know you have the balance oil don't you that you've used already yeah that because it is tree oils and it's incredibly gentle that is a really lovely yeah. stabilizing one so we mentioned earlier didn't we if your if your mind's racing and you feel really sort of off center or perhaps you know that you're you're losing control in any way tree oils will again help you just bring your energy back to your to yourself back to your center centering yourself you know allowing you yeah. to sort of relax into right what is it i really want to do rather than being bombarded and overloaded i really love the tree oils for that yeah. so, and again orange if we've had something that wasn't exactly how we want it orange has been studied to help with ptsd so there's certain peer-reviewed papers that have actually shown um on on uh, peer review is generally animal tested so they have done tests on mice which shows it it calms the startle reflex so that's how they can make the statement um but also on prison inmates in america with people who've had traumatic experiences the orange can actually help calm the body down as well so orange helps you make feel feel mm. secure and centered and it's, it gives you back a sweetness as well you know that orange is a sunshine mm. oil it's got the strength and the purity mm. of the sun within that you know it's cold pressed from the rind so it's it's from these rich ripe yeah. plants which have this sun in the, the energy really um and that's really yeah. nice to use and I, I personally love orange and balance together i think they're a beautiful combination mm-hmm. Um, and again, mm. yes, yeah, so allowing yourself to sort of find that security within again, I think that's yeah. a really important thing to know that there is science that backs up. Um, yeah, I think orange and balance are two amazing oils I couldn't be without, really. And for all ages yeah. as well. I definitely. Really, yeah. Yeah. I love orange. I really do. So that would be, yeah, if you're going to get your hands on something um, to get yourself centered and, and regain that. Even, you know, we were talking about in labor, but it could be at any in any situation. Yeah, um, yeah, it sounds absolutely. like it's a great go to mm-hmm. the balance and the orange. Yeah, for whether sure. it's, you know, Amazing. sometimes whether it's work situations where you're going into meetings, mm. you kind of have a feeling of dread or if you don't like crowds or... Yeah. You know, anything that makes you feel like, oh, I'm a bit uneasy in myself, that's where it's really nice yeah. to use a tree oil. So there's there's so many. There's frankincense mm. and sandalwood. Um, but the balanced terra yeah. blend I particularly like because it's quite subtle, not overpowering. And it's it's got some yeah. lovely tree blends in there, which, yeah. Is, again, yeah, I think we use them actually in yoga classes as well. So if somebody's feeling a bit wobbly yeah. in tree pose, you know, sometimes that unbalanced feeling or the literally off yeah. center, it can actually help you anchor into that as well and stabilize you physically to balance. Amazing. So I think that's quite fun. Yeah, uh, yeah that's fascinating. <laughs> so thinking about then the things that, the things you know, to be most um, beneficial to our particularly new mums, parents um, in those either pre-birth or like you mentioned about PTSD. And I know that you know, lots of people go through, let's face it, you know, having a baby is is a big deal. And I think so many of us do experience um, not necessarily a, a you know postnatal or, or, you know, depression or, or stress sometimes yes but sometimes Mm -hmm. it's just just getting over a big a big deal Mm -hmm. um and right you know right through those stages you you have a you have a lot of um great solutions and things that support parents in this journey um what what would be some of your i guess key takeaways that you would love for our audience to to take from this today i don't think there is an oil i know there are so many yeah (laughs) yeah there are (laughs) I do think there is an oil for every situation on a physical level. Mm. Um, Yeah. As I said, they, you know, they balance the body systems. They help the body to work optimally and they can be used alongside other medications, you know, generally speaking, 
<clears throat> they're quite safe to incorporate alongside anything. Um, um, yeah, I mean, gosh, I think there's the emotional side of it and the physical side. You can you can tune into where your needs mm. are really. Um, and I do think there's particular oils that are best for children, which are much softer and gentler for sensitive skin. Um, and I think sometimes yeah. people get a little bit scared or cautious about using essential oils because of the potency. Um, mm. so, you know, instead of using peppermint for children, you can use spearmint. It's just got a slightly different chemistry. It's not quite so spicy, um, if that makes sense, because peppermint mm. can be really quite yeah. powerful. So it's nice to have mm. the alternatives. Um, but yeah, where to begin? I mean, lavender is always very common and has such versatility. Yeah. So, you know, whether it's skin, whether it's emotional and, you know, that feeling of agitation within the heart, if you're feeling like your heart racing heart, mm -hmm. it can help with that. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's lavender is an all rounder. I use it in massage as well. Yeah. And tea tree, very cleansing, yeah. you know, for children's cuts and scrapes but I think frankincense yeah. we, we actually name it oh my light went off um <clears throat> we actually have um called frankincense the king of the oils and and that yeah. has, that's has such versatility it's one of the most peer-reviewed science background um research on it um not only for yeah the perfume industry but there's like eight grades of frankincense and different species um, so frankincense, if yep. you don't know what to use, frankincense is an awesome oil to have on hand. All rounder. Yeah, it's it's mm. it's very centering and calming as well, and mm. you know it grows in really hot, mm. dry climates. So it's a tough plant, and when it grows on the <clears throat> edge of a cliff uh, in a really hot country like Ethiopia or Oman, Somalia, you have to think about the mm. strength of mm. it that comes through that allows it to survive. And it, it has that benefit for our body, for our immune system as well. So if there's viral pathogens around, there's that side of the oils as well to boost your body's defense mechanisms. Um, mm. So that's incredible. You know, children often pick up bugs from school. Um, and I yeah. think frankincense is everybody needs it in their lives. You know, that's. Yeah. And in fact, I feel so passionate about oils in that sense anyway. You know, I really feel that yeah. it's like a lost art in a way, which doesn't have to be complicated. Yeah. But I do feel like no. medicine went one way and this was just sort of sidelined where it's the origin of this. Yeah. Medicine came from yeah. that verbal awareness. Um, yeah. And I do think, you know, certain GPs, if you're lucky, will recognize the organic chemistry value. Um, mm. But really, I feel so many people i speak to through my workshops and classes and you know one-to-ones they're just not aware that there are natural solutions <clears throat> and mm. also you know around the home for you can use them in other ways as well like for non-toxic cleaning um specifically mm -hmm. aromas in the house as well lots of toxins in the home which you don't really want in your house but you're probably not aware of so certain fragrances like plugins can be really harmful so if you have respiratory issues that could exacerbate irritation mm. for the lungs and there are really simple natural alternatives so I feel yeah. like it's, it's like a mission to share it with people in a way you know yeah how to, how to incorporate that natural element um and enjoy it through the processes it's you know it's not it's not horrible yeah it's definitely beautiful exactly yeah it's no hardship <laughs> yeah, yeah they yeah definitely definitely I think um like you say it's like a lost art really and um I love that we're talking about it and bringing back some attention to these things that can be healing restoring mm. can and you know enhancing and yeah. I know not all oils so I don't want <laughs> anyone to do anything here but I know some can be ingested some are more for aroma purposes yeah. but actually knowing that there are so many different ways as well that you can mm -hmm. you know topically on the skin um the the sense of smell and, and so on yeah really powerful stuff i definitely could talk about this 
all day yeah, and, with you. And, and French, I think, yeah, I mean, the, the French yeah. therapy training that I've had has specifically been yeah. about um, the safe internalization of oils, which is, is, mm. is um, a slightly different route. Um, I'm trying to get this light to keep working. Um, <clears throat> there must be a that's <laughs> um, But the, yeah, so the French aromatherapy is um, looking at food-based substances, so like energy balls or, in fact, actually, mo most people don't realise that essential oils have been used in flavouring for hundreds of years. And so um, mm. Fever Tree Tonic has essential oils in there. And, um, you know, wow. orange blossom flavouring in cakes is from an essential oil. Um and ideally, yeah. if you have a, a one that's labelled for food flavouring, that would have been through nutrient testing. And we're talking about droplets, not mill. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about very small quantities. But even yeah. that can be fantastically supportive to the internal organs and, and digested safely. I generally use like little veggie capsules to, to take little capsules so that it goes straight into the stomach yeah. acids with food. And then it's absorbed through yeah. a different route. So you've got the, the food route tracked as well as that topical through the skin. So directly on location yeah. is brilliant. And then the smelling it or in the in the room, those three ways, it's yeah, yeah it's it's lovely. It's there's something there for everybody mm -hmm. to utilise. Even lemon, just a single drop in your water is not, not acidic, yeah. whereas the juice can sometimes corrode people's enamel on the teeth. The oil won't do that. And that's really mm. cleansing to the body. So it supports your liver and your kidneys. It supports your gut flora. And so they yeah. all help. When you look at the holistic side of aromatherapy, what's so beautiful yeah. is that you're bringing imbalances on all your body systems. Um, mm. And I think that's amazing. And, you know, rather than isolating issues, we look at it more as a whole. And so yeah. I think that's a really key element for each individual, you know, we all we all have slightly different yeah. mechanisms and it's really honouring that as well. Yeah, I think yeah. it's quite a fantastic yeah. way of working. Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, well, I, my mind is blown. I know that I could um, definitely ask you questions all day long, but I think um I think the the important thing is today is to make sure that our listeners know that there are alternatives and that if mm. they have you know well they may have no problems or struggles whatsoever but they may have learned something today about enhancers and things that can actually benefit and boost them and their little ones or if they are you know if anyone is listening and you have got um any ailments or challenges be that uh, you know emotionally uh, psychologically or or about the body um that there are there are things that can really turn things around and quite quickly as well mm -hmm. um so if you are suffering with anything fatigue nausea um feeling low after having baby you know this, this could be a, t a very small thing that makes a very big difference in your world um and i think we should yes make sure we share this far and wide and get the message out there there's so numerous benefits you know and it's i really think there's something for everybody you know and yeah. the emotions can be quite deep and it can really help make it more manageable so personally i've experienced mm. that and it's i think it's not to be underestimated definitely it's it can be mm. significant in in helping you come up for air in that sense as well you know processing issues yeah. definitely really really valuable yeah well I think we'll be making sure all of our, our parents who are looking for sleep support have something like this to support them as well with their energy mm -hmm. and just processing that 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 whole yeah when you're trying to course correct things like that in the mm -hmm. home and struggling feeling fatigued and in a blur um because that's something we obviously see a lot of then yeah there's another another level of support there too oh Kavina if people are like me full of questions and would love to reach out to you with any questions where where can they best find you and connect with you what's the best place for them to to reach out so 
Well, you can email me. I'm always on my emails every day, but I also run um, weekly classes on how to use oils. On a Wednesday evening, we have like open to everybody and that's 7.30, usually for about an hour. And that's lovely if you've got yeah. questions, it's nice to join live and it's on Zoom. Um, but I have a Facebook group, which is called Essential Oil Hub. And that's lovely as yeah. well. And people can post questions in there. But I also offer a free half an hour call to people if they have if they want to find out more and they're not sure where to start, I think that's really lovely for people to have um, a little bit of time to chat and ask questions. Um, so that can be on Zoom or FaceTime even. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I do love this. And I think the emotional coaching that I do as well, if you're feeling really stuck or you've, um, sometimes when we're parenting, we, we notice defaults, mechanisms that perhaps we don't love about ourselves. And that can be a little bit triggering sometimes. And even that can be supportive yeah. of the essentials very significantly to sort of deal with past yeah. issues that we've maybe resurfaced when we become parents as well. So I do coaching yeah. um, and usually sort of little blocks of, of weekly sessions to help people sort of use their oils and work through them as well. But yeah, please reach out yeah. to me. I'm happy to share all my details with you guys. Um, oh, yeah, whichever way you. is best for you, really. Well, We'll put all your links in the show notes. So if you're listening, have a look at the show notes. You'll find your, all your options there. So you can reach out to Karina. And um, definitely, I love the sound of joining your um, Zoom sessions and, and learning more from you. So fantastic thank you so stuff. Much for Karina, me as well. Thank <laughs> you. Oh, you're welcome. No, thank you. Thank you for your time and for joining us and sharing your wisdom. I know we're only just scratching the surface to, to what you, you know, uh, but I really appreciate your time. Thank you. No, thank you. It's lovely.